So on this class opener, I want you to copy down this question and I want you to answer it with the partner to discuss it and write down something, right? Not just yes or no, but give a reason for it. You might want to sketch something, I don't know, um, or an explanation. Question is, is it possible to have a cubic polynomial function that has no real zeros? Now, in order for you to really understand the question, you need to understand the vocab. What does it mean when they say real zeros? answers right check it out on the wall we have this uh, paper that says answers solutions x-intercepts roots all mean the same thing when dealing with as a matter of fact this is not just quadratics anywhere anymore just with any function with any equation the zeros are also the same thing so answers solutions roots zeros uh, x-intercepts they're all the same thing so when they say is it possible to graph or to have a cubic polynomial function that has no real zeros that does not actually cross the x-axis? Go for it. Talk to a partner. All right, so just, just a little review. We know what parabolas look like, right? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, a parabola. What's the parent graph of the parabola? Could somebody give me the parent graph function? Y, y equals x squared. x squared. Thank you. And what does that look like? It looks like a U-shaped curve that touches the x-axis at the origin, right? Um, what's the end behavior of this guy? The end behavior is both up here, right? As you go to the left, it goes to positive infinity. As you go to the right, it goes to positive infinity, right? Um, and that is true for any even degree polynomial function. The end behavior is going to be up here, right? Um, what about x cubed? What does that look like? that snake-like curve, right? Yeah. And does that one have an end behavior both up here? No, it has one down here and one up here, right? Unless you have a negative in your leading coefficient, then that would flip it, right? But we know that cubic functions are something like this, right? Um, so what I'm asking is, is it possible to have one of these snake-like curves to not cross the x-axis? No way. No way, it has to cross the x-axis. E even if you had something like, uh, like even if you had something that's way up here, like let's say you had like a snake-like curve up there, you know it's gonna cross at some point, right? So it's not possible to have a cubic polynomial function that has no real zeros. It's at least gonna have, at least gonna have what? One real zero. Mm -hmm. What's the maximum amount of real zeros it could have? Two. The maximum amount of answers. Let's, let's sketch that. Let's do a snake-like curve. Three. So the maximum amount of, of zeros a cubic function could have is three. So I just sketched it right there, but let me actually pull a real one, a real cubic function from the uh, book. There's a cubic function that's from our book, and there's the graph of that cubic function from our book, all right? So yes, it's a power of three. It's an odd degree function, which means that the end behavior is not both gonna be up here. One has to be down here, one has to be up there. Unless your leading coefficient was negative, then it would flip, right, the, the end behavior. Um, but this one has how many real zeros? Three, right? The beauty of this is if I were to give you a function or an equation, not a function, if I were to say x to the third minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0, and I told you to solve it, you could actually graph it and then go to this location, and that'll be an answer like x equals negative 0.1, x equals 1.5, x equals 2.8. Like Those are the three actual answers that would work for this equation. So graphing is awesome. Graphing calculators are awesome. The Desmos app is awesome because you could graph any polynomial function and you could clearly see how many real answers it has. And you could actually go to the trace option and find out what those actual decimal answers are. Anyway, um, I wanted to get a cubic function when I did this class opener this morning. I wanted to get a, a cubic function that had nice x-intercepts. So I started uh, messing around with Desmos. And I got one right here. Here's a cubic function. It's a snake-like curve. Um, it does cross the x-axis at 
three locations, and they actually are nice locations. Here's my function itself, okay? y equals 2x to the third plus 7x squared plus 2x minus 3. Um, now, let's pretend that I didn't know that that was my equation. All right, let's pretend I didn't know that that was my equation. And let's say I just gave you this graph, and I told you, well, could this be, could this be a even degree function? No, even degree functions are going to have n behavior both up here or both down here. This one has one down here, one up there. So it has to be an odd degree function. Now, since we had three nice locations, uh, let's check this out. Right here, the answer is x equals negative 3. The answer, the solution, the x-intercept, whatever you want to call it. This one right here, nice answer. x equals what? Negative 1. Right here. Is that a nice answer? It actually is. It's perfectly in the middle, right? So what would that answer be? x equals 1 half, right? Here's 0, here's 1. That's perfectly in the middle, 1 half. So I have three nice answers. Now imagine this. I I'm getting way off tangent here. I'm, I'm actually talking to give you a taste of the future, all right? Future chapter 5, but I'm just doing it right now. You have those three answers. Those three answers had to come from some equation, right? And we already know it's a cubic equation, but they had to come from some equation. And if they're nice answers, that means that that equation was factorable. What do I mean by that? I must have had something like a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. And if it were equal to zero, I'd get these three answers of negative three of negative one and also positive one half. So if I did have a binomial times a binomial times a binomial and it equaled zero, that means I could separate each one of those. So this parenthesis, if I set it equal to zero, it should give me the answer negative three. So what would this binomial actually be? X plus three, X plus three right? Uh, this middle, so okay, so this one we said, we concluded that this one has to be X plus three in order for it to give us the answer X equals negative three. What would this one have to be? What would this one have to be in order to get x equals negative 1? x plus 1. Now, this one's a little bit challenging. What would this have to be in order for us to get 1 half? What would this have to be in order for us to get x equals 1 half? OK, so think about this. If your answer uh, has to be 1 half, you'd have to have a binomial that you would have to First, move the 1 over to that side to get the 1, and then divide by 2. So that would technically be 2x minus 1, right? If I were to solve this 2x minus 1 plus 1, divide by 2, I'd get 1 half as an answer, right? I know I don't expect you to be able to do this right now. I'm just giving you a little taste of what we're going to be having in the future. So this binomial right here is 2x minus 1. Guess what would happen if I were to distribute, distribute, combine like terms, and then distribute, distribute, combine like terms? What would happen? I'd get this exact cubic polynomial equation. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. OK, you're not impressed. Whatever. Uh, let's move on. So that was just my side tangent. I apologize, but that's a little taste of what we're going to be doing in the future. You're going to be actually, in the future, be able to take an equation, a graph, of a polynomial equation that has nice answers like, like these guys, like this, you're going to be able to create the equation just by looking at the graph and analyzing the answers. But don't worry about that right now. That's in the far future. Right now, let's uh, jump into our notes for the day. 5.4, analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. So we were already analyzing graphs. We're going to al analyze some more. So write down the title, and we're going to start with this new vocab term. Uh, you could, yeah, you could put a line and just continue on the same page of your notebook. Uh, this new vocab term is called relative maximum, relative minimum. Okay, not absolute maximum, absolute minimum, but the relative maximum, relative minimum. Copy it down, and I'll tell you the definition right now. So, what is a relative maximum or a relative minimum? Here it is. Copy this down, please. It's the max or min value in a certain part of the graph. It's not the the absolute maximum value. It's not the absolute minimum value, but it's just the max or min in a certain part of the graph. AKA, that means also known as turning points, okay? Also known as turning points. So copy that down, and 
let's understand it by seeing it on a graph. So let's really understand relative max or relative min. Let's look at this whole cubic function. I know it's a cubic function. I got it from the book. Um, we know it's an odd degree function because the end behavior is one's up, one's down, right? Um, but let me ask you this. What is, how, how far up does this graph go? What's the maximum value of this graph? Infinity, Infinity right? How far low does this go? Infinity. So when I say, what's the max? Well, it doesn't really have a max. The max is infinity. What's the minimum? Well, it doesn't really have a minimum. The minimum is infinity, negative infinity, right? Um, but it does have a relative max and a relative min. So what's a relative max or min? It's a certain part of the graph. So if I just look at this graph, zoom in just to that right there, that kind of looks like a parabola opening down. And that really does have a relative max value right there. Okay. So if you sketched it, Please put a dot at that highest point right there. And let's put, let's actually write down the words relative max. This guy right here is the relative maximum value. Now, um, if somebody asked me, what is that relative max value? I would say it's the location approximately uh, 0 0.5 comma uh, 1 point what? What would you guys say? One point, it's a little bit more than five, maybe 1.6, 1.7. So I would call that my, my relative max, 0 0.5, 1.6. Now, the book actually just says state the x values of where your relative max is at. Okay, so the book's saying uh, just state the x value of where your relative max is at. So all you would say on your answer would be 0 0.5. But if you want to state the location, you want to give an X and Y value. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, that's the relative max. It's not the real max because the real max, we know that it goes up forever. Okay, how about the relative min? That would be down here at this location. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's give an actual location of that guy. I would say one, two... Two point, what do we say, 2.2? It's just an approximation. So 2.2 for the X and for the Y, what would we say? Negative one, it looks like it goes down a little bit further. So negative 1.1 maybe, right? So that'd be the location of your relative minimum value. It's not really the minimum value because the real minimum value is negative infinity. We know the arrow says it goes down forever. So that's relative max, relative min. What do you guys think? If we do, if we don't put okay, so I hope you sketch that. I hope you jot it down, relative max, relative min. I hope you actually put the, the estimate of the locations. Um, what I want to do now is give you another fact for you to copy down in your notebooks. Here's the fact. The degree of a function tells you the most times a graph can change direction. It tells you actually how many directions it actually goes in, right? So maybe we, we, maybe we would write that down. The degree will tell you the most uh, directions it'll actually go in. And it also allows you, or tells you the most real zeros, bless you, the most answers you could possibly have. So let's understand what you just wrote down. The degree of a function tells you the most times a graph can change direction. It also tells you the most real zeros you could possibly have. Well, I'm telling you, this was a cubic function that was graphed. How many real zeros does it have? One, two, three. The degree is three. The maximum amount of real, of real zeros, real answers, real x-intercepts will be three. There is no way you could graph y equals x to the third type of function that'll cross four times or five times or six times. If you have a third degree function, the most answers you could get are three. Is it always going to have three? No, it won't always have three. It, you might have your graph something like this, and that would just cross one time, right? But the most answers on a third degree function will be three answers, right? Three x-intercepts. Cool with that? Let's talk about direction. Let's just look at this blue graph from left to right. Where am I going? I'm going up. That's one direction. Turning point, what happens? I'm going down. That's two directions. 
Turning point, what's happening? Going up, that's three directions. So if you're going one, two, three, I know that it has to be at least the third degree function. Okay? It has to be at least the third degree function. This cannot be a second degree function. It has to be at least the third degree function. Okay? So these are very important facts because we're going to be able to look at graphs and decide what degree function it is or what it has to be at least. Let's move on. This is our actual homework for today. Um, page 335, we're doing numbers 34 through 39. We're analyzing these six graphs and answering everything that they ask about them. So um, I would jot this down in your notebook. Um, you don't have to actually write down the graphs. Don't draw the graphs themselves. Um, you could get on the video and get the graphs from the video. You don't have to copy them down. You just have to answer the questions. All right, so let's look at um, part A. It says, estimate the x-coordinate of every turning point. Now notice, the turning points on number 34, what's the turning point right there? It's right here, right? Which is a relative max value, right? Okay. Um, but they don't want the exact location. They just say, Give me the x value of this location, All right? So what would we say right there? What is the x value of this location? Negative 3.5, yeah? Negative 3.5 would be the x value of this location. So for, uh, what else does it ask? So part A, it says, Estimate the x-coordinate, we said it was negative 3.5, of every turning point and determine if those coordinates are relative max or relative min. So we said negative 3.5, negative 1, whoops, negative 1, 2, 3.5. And is this going to be a, a relative max or a relative min? Yeah. Relative max. Cool. Uh, where's the x value of your next turning point? 1, 2, right here. So what would that value be at? That would be right about there. Negative 2 point, it looks like a little bit more than 5, so negative 2.6, negative 2.7. Yeah, those are all good estimates. Okay, so this is what you're going to be writing down um, as part A answers, and all you have to do is write your answers. You don't have to copy down the graph. You could look at the graph, analyze the graph, and copy down your answers. So this is the way they provide the answers in the back of the book. So 34A is negative 3.5. Let's, let's look at that. Yeah, we said negative 1, 2, 3.5, and we said that this was a maximum value. So they put 34A, negative 3.5, it's a relative max. They probably should have written relative max, not just max. Um, this next one, actually, they did use 2.5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2.5. We did 2.6, but you get the idea. That's your relative minimum value. So you're going to be answering all these different... Uh, questions. All right. Um, let's see what else they ask about this question. Part B, estimate the x coordinate of every zero. What's a zero? The answers. So they're saying uh, estimate the answers. So give me an answer. X equals what? X equals negative two. Yeah, but let's be more precise and estimate. Negative 1.9. Right. Which other one? Negative 0.1. Another one, one, two, three, uh, what would we say? Three. X equals 3.3, 3.4. Those are all good answers. Let's see what answers they gave for 34B. Negative 1.75, yeah, we said negative 1.7. 0 0.25, we said 0 0.1, that's fine. So yeah, estimates, right? They said 3.5, even though it looks like a 3.4. So that's what we're gonna be answering. Uh, what else, part C. They say, determine the smallest possible degree of the function. Could this be a third degree function? Could it be a third degree function? No. no. Could, it be a, a, could it be a parabola? No, it's not a parabola. So what degree is the minimum degree that it could actually be? It all depends on the direction that it goes. So here's one, two. See, if I said, if I just said, look at this right here, it goes up, one, down. So that's two directions. That's a parabola. That's a degree of two. But it's one, two, three, four, five. Five. So I know that this has to be at least a degree five polynomial. 
It has to be at least a degree five polynomial. Degree five. And that makes total sense because if your degree is five, it's an odd degree function, which means that the end behavior is one down here and one up here. Make sense? Okay, so you could find the degree of any uh, graph just by counting the directions that it's going in. One direction, two directions, three directions, four, five, degree five. I mean, it could be seven or nine, but it has to be at least five. Any questions? No? Okay, so that's the next answer for 34C, I believe. There it is, 34C, it's five. Uh, what else? It's asking for part D, determine the, the domain and the range of the function. Okay, we've, we're good at domain and range. What is your domain? Yeah, domain are your x's. Does this go to the left forever? Yeah, even though it goes down, it goes to the left forever. It goes to the right forever, even though it's going up. It never goes straight up. It keeps going to the right. So yeah, the domain is x equals all real numbers. How about the range? But how do I say it? Y equals all real numbers. Some of us are thinking, what do you mean all real numbers? Doesn't this go up forever on the y's and go down forever on the y's? So it's all real numbers. Yay? Okay. Let's look at number 35. And by the way, that's what they put right there. The domain, all real numbers. Range, all real numbers. I don't like the fact that they didn't put x equals all real numbers and y equals all real numbers. They should do that. Anyway, uh, how about this guy? Uh, is this an odd or an even degree function? Even, even absolutely. OK, that was from yesterday. Um, they're asking us for estimate the x coordinates of every turning point. So what would your x coordinate be of your first turning point? Here it's coming down, coming down, turns. What's that x coordinate value? What's that x coordinate value? Negative 2.5. Negative 2.5, right? If you actually wanted your, your precise uh, location, you would say it's about negative 2.5 comma uh, negative 3.1. Looks like it goes a little bit lower than just negative 3. Um, but, but they don't want the exact location, they just say, give me the x value. So your x value would be negative 2.5. Uh, the next x value would be right here at negative half, I would say, right? So about negative 0.5 comma 1. If you wanted the actual location, negative 0.5 comma 1. And the other one would be about right here. What would that be? 1.5. 1.5. So 1.5 comma negative 3.1. I'm giving the actual location. The, the book's not asking for the actual location. They're just, they just want the x value. All right, so your answer for part A, the x values should be like negative 2.5, negative 0.5, and 1.5. So for part A, check it out. There it is. Negative 2.5, negative 0.5, and 1.5. Exactly what we just said. And of course, we need to state that this guy right here is a relative what? Minimum. This one right here is a relative max. And this one right here is a relative, relative min. That's right. Well, you know what? Come to think of it, this y value is actually, it actually is the minimum. It's the relative minimum and it's the actual minimum because the graph doesn't go anywhere lower than that, right? Right? Okay. So that'll come into play when we talk about domain and range. Uh, what else do they want us to talk about here? Uh, part B, estimate the x coordinate of every zero. Again, what does zero mean? Answer. The answers. So what are the answers here? Give me an approximation. Negative 1, 2, 3, 3.8, 3.7. Those are good approximations. How about this guy? One, negative 1. Negative one. It looks like it's a negative 0.9, but whatever. Negative 1 or negative 0.9, either one will, will work. How about this guy right here? Zero. Oh, this one. Yeah, I missed zero. Sorry. Zero. And the one over there? 3.1, 3.2. Okay, so those are your actual uh, zeros, your actual answers, your actual x-intercepts. So that would be part B, 35 part B. There it is, negative 3.5, negative 1, 0, and 3. I got a little too specific with the 0 0.9 instead of negative 1. Uh, what else? It says, uh, determine the smallest possible degree of the function. What's the smallest possible degree? Four, because the direction is going down, that's one. It's going up, that's two. Going down, that's three. Going up, that's four. So this has to be at least a fourth degree function. Make sense? Yeah. 
the, the amount of directions that it's going in tells you the degree that it has to be, okay? And last but not least, they want us to do the domain and range. So what do you guys say about this guy? What's the domain of this guy? X equals all real numbers. All right. And how about the range? Okay. So why, why is this all real numbers on X? Because it goes to the left forever and to the right forever. Even though they're going up, they do go left and right forever. Now the range are your Y values. Your range are your Y values. Does this go up forever? Yes. Does it go down forever? No. no. So what do we say the range is? Negative 3.1. Perfect. That's good. We got it. Okay, we got it. So again, I just want you to give a list of your answers. You don't have to copy down the graph. Just write down those answers on your notebook. That'll be how I verify uh, that you did this. We want to spend the rest of this period uh, doing the rest of these questions, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Um, I'll leave it up here for you. If you're at home, just pause it and... Answer all that for each one of these. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing you the answers here so you could have the answers on video. Uh, you could pause the video to check your answers on whatever you need. I don't want you to copy them down right now, but at home, if you want to check your answers, go to this video and pause wherever, wherever you need.